Hello, uh, welcome to the first edition of the, the Nerd Consultant's Untitled Game Podcast. Um, uh, this and, is, this and, okay, for this one, the reaction to the Last of Us Part 2 wanking hour. Um, well, uh, this is where I bring on my friend, this is where I bring my friends along to discuss big moments, it's going to be where well, we're going to discuss big moments like Nintendo Directs and... E3. We were hoping to start this year with E3, but obviously uh, due to COVID, that did not happen. So we're going to be doing um, our thoughts on the Game Awards to this year. So um, I'm joined by my friend, my friends from the Anime Amigos podcast. We've got Reese and Hello. Elliot. I have McDonald's. I'm happy. And Alfie. And Alfie's here. Right? Reese's lovable dog. Ripley's in the other room, sadly, because she likes to ignore me. Um, so, I mean, uh, uh, how did you feel about the game? Uh, how do you feel about the game awards in general this year? I'll start with you, Reese. How did you feel this year's awards? Well, that's this yeah, because also wasn't as bloated. Yeah, yeah, that's a big thing. I, it, last year, the last few years have felt very bloated awards, and this year they felt like they they trimmed the fact. I got to bed a lot sooner than I did. <laughs> Um, I mean, last mention, previous years. Not to mention this year had, I think, a lot more sig- significant announcements than last year's. Yeah. Because yeah. last year's was mostly just kind of reaffirming stuff that we already knew about. And um, I, 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 tell me if you think I'm wrong on this one. Did last year feel like there was a large emphasis on PC games? Yeah. Yeah, probably. Like, there was a lot of League of Legends stuff. There was a lot of... Here's a game we're working on. Uh, here's a game we're working on, on, but it's not coming out for like two more years. Like, I, I think about uh, it. Also, didn't help last year that Nintendo were virtually absent. Yeah, from pretty much. Year. Yeah, like I, I don't think I was the only one who last year was hoping for a new to see the last Smash Fighter because uh, or DLC fight because they did the same the year before. Well, this year they announced it ahead of time. They said, "Yeah, we're going to have a Smash character tonight." Um, yeah, and I'll be honest, I'm not sure which of the two I was more hyped for, Joker or this one, which we'll get into in a bit, obviously. Um, I, I know I know my answer on that one, but um, uh, uh, let, before we get into all the trailers and all that business, let's talk the awards themselves. So, Game of the Year and um, the big winner on the night was The Last of Us Part Two, And um, we... Mm-hmm. And it's a pity Ren couldn't join us for this one because he's one of the few people who really we in our friend he's one of the people in our friend groups who really goes to bat for the Last of Us Part Two. Well, we also have I think uh, Iona and Becky. Yeah, they really they they, can't, well. they they really go to bat. So it, it's kind of interesting in our group of friends that it's kind of like this lot really love it. You guys really hate it, and I'm in the mm-hmm. middle. Like, I'm right in the middle. There's parts of that game that really I really love, and there's parts of that game that really infuriate me. Um, yeah, um, and then I'm a friend in the corner being a mega sim. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, seriously, I'm writing a book right now. That would be like me simping over my main character. It's, um, I, I must be honest. I, uh, it, with, when it comes to um, The Last of Us Part Two, there were a few awards I felt it deserved. Like um, the voice acting one, I think Laura Bailey really earned her non- her win. Oh uh, yeah, like Laura Bailey is my favorite, one of my favorite voice actors. Her and Ashley Johnson were great in a uh, in that game. They fully deserved that. Uh, I think best uh, that one for um, making it so people with disabilities can play games. That one yeah, as well deserves yeah. the uh, accessibility award. The accessibility yeah. award. That's it. Um, I, I I know they've done some amazing work towards that. That was kind of deserved. I'm glad I didn't win Best Action Adventure Game. That went to the one that we voted for. for All oh, three of us voted for Game of the Year. That went to Hades. Actually, I think that was Best Action. I'm pretty sure she's, they still won Best yeah. Action Adventure. Yeah, last one's got Action Adventure. Hades yeah. just got Action. Yeah, Hades wasn't even nominated for Action Adventure, I don't think. I'm glad that Hades beat in at least one category because Hades is yeah. Yeah. a phenomenal game. Like, um, It's the game I... I love, I loved, I loved it so much. This is like my favorite roguelite now. I think um, it's my, fa- it's my favorite indie game. It's fantastic. I think um, the thing about uh, Hades for me, and 
it, it's uh, it's can't compete at the minute. It's competing for my game of the year. I'm saying I can't decide between that and Ori right now. So I'm having to choose between my favorite roguelite and my favorite Metroidvania, and that's a really I'm, uh, hard decision. I can't surprise you. Um, I can't surprise to start com- combating for Animal Crossing with you because you really like Animal Crossing, don't I, you? I really like Animal Crossing. I really like it. It's going to be. But put it this way. I think like, this is one of the strongest years for... Uh, see if you guys agree with me on this one. This is one of the strongest years for the Game of the Year nominations, yet only three of them are probably going to be in my ten best games of the year. Yeah. I mean... Um, and how, also, only two of them are the only ones without crunch. Uh, true, yeah, no, and those two are oh. Animal Crossing and Hades. Um, I, yeah. Was there terrible crunch stories around Final Fantasy VII Remake? I imagine there would have been a Square Enix... Yeah, square. <laughs> I imagine that would have been crushed, but I don't think it would have been nearly to the extent that there was with Naughty Dog and CD Project CD Project Red. Yeah, those there's some real horror. Because those were atrocious crunch periods. Yeah, those are yeah. some some real horror stories there. Um, so uh, you guys, um, I mean, you guys were really mad last night when Last of Us Part Two won. Have you calmed down since? And in any nope. way. <laughs> I have come down a little bit. I'm not raging, but I am really disappointed because if you ask me, any of the other games could have made it as game of the year. I feel like the only other one that I probably would be a little upset with, but I wouldn't be too massively upset, is probably Doom Eternal. Yeah. But, but um, yeah, especially considering the fact that for me, of all the category, of all the nominee, nominations, Last of Us Part 2 is the one I feel like deserves it the least. Okay, yeah. uh, 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 Reese, would there be any others that you would have been unhappy if that game had, if that game got Game of the Year over Hades? Um, maybe Animal Crossing. Yeah, you were really not a fan of Animal Crossing at all. Yeah, I, I, I just get burnt out on it too easily. Uh, yeah, I'm out. I'll, I'll, acknowledge, I'll admit, I'm not much of an Animal Crossing fan. This is my first time trying an Animal Crossing game. I feel like I might have picked the wrong one. I feel like I might have, should have picked someone like New Leaf. But uh, I, I wasn't a big fan. Of, wasn't a massive fan of it. But I acknowledge mostly that that's just me. I acknowledge that a hell of a lot of people love that game and love that series. I, I find it interesting. Yeah. It, it, it may not be tailored towards me, but I respect people liking it. Yeah, exactly. Like... Oh, a but a crap ton of my friends love that love that game. I'm just like, good for you. Good job having fun with that game. It's interesting because I go through all my friends list on um, uh, my Switch, and apart from you two, everyone's played Animal Crossing way more than me. And I'm like, what have I done with my life? <laughs> like, bitch, I'm bitch. I spend my time playing Age of Calamity. I've a, there's only one game on my Switch that I have 300 plus hours on, and that's um, oh, actually 400 plus now. Um, Smash Brothers. Which um, in all fairness, it is it is it is the best game on Switch. Let's be honest. Even though it wasn't nominated for best ongoing game, yeah, that's that's a real that's another one I'm going to complain about. That, that, that Smash Brothers not being nominated, considering that they've made very big, significant changes since it's been nominated. They've had they've added the yeah, new, like, the like op- seriously, it sucks. The, I mean, they've added the online tournaments, which have taken up most of my new play time. They've added. Um, the the uh, uh, bag the the punching bag game they've um, yeah. added tons of characters they've added tons of stages they've added tons of music they they're just making that and they're balancing it out so well they're making that game better and better and better and better and better yeah. with every patch I don't yeah. understand why and it was nominated just why No Man's Skies like don't get me wrong I'm I'm happy it's not something like Apex like Legends of Fortnite again but why why No Man's Skies? I, I, I guess I kind of wish I could bring in... Maybe a bunch of improvements or something? I, I, yeah, I, I they basically had a massive bounce back. Yeah, I... Um, some sort of stuff. Um, there's a person who works in the, in, in, the, in the admin team in the office here, and uh, they said that they really... Lo- they, they're really into No Man's Sky. They're really enjoying it. And I like the fact when Sean Murray was accepting the award. He basically got caught having a, having a swig of booze. Like, oh, oh, holy <laughs> shit, we won! And he had to quickly put it down. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, thank, yeah, thank you. Just show, yeah, can I just show it's not like he wasn't expecting it. it? It's not like, it wasn't like, ah, oh, we won, thank you. Just like, wait, we won? Why? Why not? 
I mean, um, can I... Uh, a thing about Sean Murray and No Man's Sky. This is a very unpopular opinion, but I don't blame that team for how No Man's Sky turned out. Because if you really look into a lot about that game, it was very clear Sony kind of stopped... Did, forced them into a position where they had to kind of big up things that they didn't know whether they were going to be able to do it or yeah. not. The biggest problem is that Sean Murray just said yes to everything. And he really Which I feel have. like... Yeah. I feel like... Um, I feel like all those promises could have been met earlier. It's just need more time in the oven. Uh, yeah, but remember, they were, get, they were getting tons of shit whenever they delayed a game. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So... I, I feel like, um, it's interesting to think though, this is a very strange year because normally the game awards are quite spread out amongst a whole bunch of games. It's not like one big winner on the night like there is with the Oscars. But this year we had really The Last of Us 2 dominated it. Um, mm -hmm. it like, um, I'm pretty sure I, I ever looked so like, um, all the other game of the, all the nominations for game of, that were up for game of the year. I think the most one of them got was two. Uh, yeah, I believe that w the one that would win Game of the Year eventually, you're saying. Because I'm pretty sure... Yeah, I believe... Yeah, I believe... Because, like, hey, I'm pretty sure the only ones that got two were Hades and Final Fantasy VII, which... Oh, uh, no, Among Us 2. I really... Among Us 2 did. Among Us 2 No, I mean the two. ones... I mean the ones that were nominated for Game of the Year. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, and, like, Dewey Toe didn't win any. Meanwhile, that's the most... I think I counted at least six rewards. Oh, Ghost of Tsushima got two. So, oh, yeah, Ghost of Tsushima got, got two, yeah. But here's a, here's a, here's a last question on the, the awards before we move on. Because um, we all would love Hades. I mean, Reese, you could probably talk for hours about why Hades oh, won Hades, an amazing wait. game. I mean, um, it, it, uh, you proper love that game. Oh, well, yes, because I spent all of my high school years um, taking Latin classes. So I pretty much know mythology back to front. Ah, uh, yeah, like, like I firstly, I love the I'm very, I love Greek mythology. Thank you, Percy Jackson, for that obsession. And uh, yeah, honestly, I absolutely, uh, I absolutely love it. And I love how he's taking a different take on on it. Like less using it as a set piece, and more using the mythology to tell a, a really good story. Um, uh, which is why, Reese, you which know, is why, go ahead. Which is. Why, which is why I think it's a shame that it didn't, like, I acknowledge that uh, I, with best narrative, personally, I vote for Final Fantasy VII because they took what was already a really good story and expanded it without making it feel like padding. It felt like it was like, that was how the story was going to go along, that's why I voted for it. But I will acknowledge that Hades probably should have won that award. They should have. Because of how it combined gameplay and narrative into this amazing story into this like amazing story and yeah it got beat out by depressed people being depressed with well, zombies I will say um, this is the one where we all voted really differently because you uh, Rally went for Final Fantasy 7 Remake uh, uh, Reese went for Hades I went for uh, 13 Sentinels Ages Rim which um, is an amazing sci-fi story it's quite complicated you're going to have to really sit down and pay attention to everything that's happening and go over the data logs with all the information because you're going to get lost if you're not careful. But if you put the effort in, it's an amazing story. Uh, yeah. But uh, I fully acknowledge Hades was very close to getting the vote from me. But um, yeah. I'm right in thinking, Reese, it's actually a lot closer to the Greek mythology than a lot of um, other, other games yeah. that try to do it. Yeah, it definitely is. It's closer than what uh, the original God of War was. I think God of War was pretty close to Greek mythology. However, definitely use Greek mythology just to more as an excuse to kill shit. Yeah. And like they, uh, they acknowledge in like the uh, in the making of that, they mostly use Greek mythology because they thought that the monsters within will make great enemies to fight. Um, so I think on that basis, we should go talk about the trailers that showed up. Yeah. Um, uh, just qu just quickly, biggest betrayal. Persona 5 World didn't win Best JR best RPG. I am... Um, oh, 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 Tina Blade. Is anything, Tina Blade wasn't nominated, though, which is no, a shit. That's a shame. shame. Yeah, no, that that should have been... Xena, if, if Persona 5 World's getting nominated, Xenoblade Definitive Edition should get nominated, because... Yeah, yeah. 
that is the but yeah, best say, version. Five point is my game of the year, but sadly I can't count it. No, it, it's a shame because I'm um, I, I uh, because of the rules I put in with um, my best games list, I can't include either Xenoblade or Persona Five Royal, even though they are two of the best games I played this year. If um, you could, uh, if you could put in Persona Five Royal, where would you put it? Number one. Yeah, same. Woo. But uh, Xenoblade. If I give a game of time, of course I would. My okay, so um, Reese, what was your favorite? Tra- what was your favorite trailer that you saw that night? What trailer got you most excited for something, or was the most surprising? Well, for most surprising, that's going the Perfect Dark trailer. No one saw that coming. No one. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that was a big one for Microsoft to to build out. Like Microsoft have, yeah. like Microsoft have not really had they're not really having a great time right now because no, Halo Infinite's yeah. been delayed uh, the medium got delayed again I think they were kind of wise to do that because it would have been coming out the same day as Cyberpunk and you don't want to compete with that game um, no I think it was coming out like two days after Cyberpunk so it won't come out tomorrow yeah I, I mean I think they were just right to delay it um, I mean they said yeah. co- it was a COVID related delay but I, I, I got a feeling of someone at Microsoft said no, 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 we're not having that compete with um, Cyberpunk. And Microsoft do hold the advertising rights to Cyberpunk. But here we go. I'll be, um, honest, I'll be honest, though, with the medium, I probably would have bought that over Cyberpunk. Medium just seems like a bit more of an interesting game to me. Yeah, I know what you it mean. Definitely seems like a more, it definitely seems like a more finished one, let's be honest. Um, in, the, in relation to Perfect Dark, I mean, uh, I was the only one out, I, I kind of went into the um, awards expecting to see Perfect Dark because... I'd actually been listening to a lot of um, rumours that have been going around. There was a lot of talk that um, Microsoft had been working on a Perfect Dark game. But you guys took you completely by surprise that Perfect Dark was a thing. No, massively, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I've tried to avoid all spoilers going in. So, yeah, same. Uh, I don't... It's this, this one isn't done by Rare, is it? No, no I don't believe it is. The original one was. Original one which, is a major, which is a major shame because they did the original Perfect Dark. I feel like that would have been the perfect call. Like, get Rare to make Perfect Dark, the new Perfect Dark. I feel like that would be really good. Well, uh, the, f- yeah, but the problem with the modern Rare team is that all the old developers have already been booted off. That is so kind of the same studio, but new developers. Yeah, they're kind of they're, 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 they're kind of all now working on ukulele at the minute. Um, they because they all went off and did their own studio. And which, uh, by the way. Which, by the way, the Impossible Lair is now free on Xbox Game Pass. Oh, sweet. Um, I've got... Uh, well, it's, it's not technically free, because you just have to buy the Game Pass. Well, yeah, but... Um, Honestly, I've... I've got, got, you know what I mean? It's, it's I, mean I, I, actually have, I actually have the Game Pass for my PC, honestly, so... I, I, yeah, I got Game Pass as soon as I got my Xbox, so it's really been great value. And, um, I mean, I can now really try out Perfect Dark again, because it's part of my Game Pass subscription. I can get Perfect Dark. Um, I'm not too upset Rare's not handling Perfect Dark. I'll be interested to see what another studio does with it. It's the same reason I'm not too unhappy Lionhead Studios are not doing the next Fable. <coughs> like, but Microsoft really... Why I, but can Lionhead Studios go bankrupt or something, though? Yeah, hence why I'm glad Microsoft has got the... Uh, they're going to give it to a, comp- yeah. to a competent studio. Don't yeah. ask me. It's, yeah, it also, finally, it also finally made Peace of Mind you shut up. Um, so here's a here's the thing about Perfect. Uh, I mean, Rare are working on Everwild at the minute, which I have no idea. That game looks pretty, but I have no idea what it's going to play like. Microsoft. Yeah. It actually brings into another thing. Did Mike, Microsoft didn't have much of a presence this year? No, well, you, 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 you forget the biggest announcement, Cal. Master Chief in Fortnite. Yeah, Master Chief in Fortnite was definitely the uh, <laughs> yeah. big one. The but, highlight of Microsoft's. They, well, the Massacres won. They Massacres won amazing. Like. One iconic character. Let's see the massacre another one. So how do you... Uh, um, how do you... You guys are not invested in the Xbox ecosystem all that much, but you kind of have PCs. Do How do you guys feel now that Microsoft didn't have much of a presence this year compared to the fact they got not, the Series X last year? Honestly, I am a tiny... I'm a little worried for them, really, because they don't have anything major coming out uh any point like within the next year yeah like I'm oh, about Halo. I, I'm doubtful they're even going to get Halo out like honestly when I'm hearing from the production of that thing they're the, the sort of people that are leaving and the people that are coming on board I'm like how badly has this game been delayed is this coming out in 2021 or are we only going to get the multiplayer in 2021 yeah, like, 
I mean, I was expecting at least like something for like a new Gears of War, a new Forza, but we haven't even got any either of them. I feel so. like I feel like Microsoft's messaging right now is 2021's a bit of a bust, but keep Leave us alone. <laughs> but um, keep us on board because 2022 we're going to really hit our stride, and I think they will. They've got all these studios working on all these games. Obsidian's going to bring out a bunch of their stuff. Um, we're going to have the Bethesda acquisition is going to make it feel like Starlink is probably going to come out next year, and that's going to yeah, be. But at the- um, at the same time, I'm pretty sure by the point where the games really start go- coming out, people will have more focus on Sony because they've had they get a bunch of really good games coming out next year. Like the new Action Clank's coming out, the new Horizons probably coming out. We're really looking forward to the new God of War. That's coming at the end of the year. Yeah, the, um, I mean we'll talk about Sony in a minute. But um, Elliot, what was a big trailer for you that you were surprised or really hyped about? Uh, the most surprising one for me, I'm going to go with my most surprise surprise over my most hype, because you already probably know that. Uh, my most biggest surprise, honestly, is the fact that we're getting a new Mass Effect. Yeah, that was surprising. I thought uh, I thought EA was kind of pushing that to one side. I know we're getting the Mass Effect was, remasters, but... I was, kind of thinking, I was kind of thinking they were done with it since after Andromeda. Didn't sell too well. Oh, yeah, no. I mean, um, Reese, did you play much Mass Effect? I played a bit of the first, and that was it. Um, uh, I haven't, I haven't really played any of it. It's weird. It's one of the series I've been kind of interested in, but never really had the will to go out and give it a try. I, yeah, no, I, I really like Mass Effect. If I'm honest, I, I, I really Mass Effect Two is probably in the list of some of the, my favorite games. I really like Mass Effect Two a whole lot. We I, don't I, talk about Mass Effect Three. Um, I mean, I, even Mass Effect 3, I don't like the ending of that game, but the, everything leading up to it was kind of like, yeah, no, this is great. I'm, but um, I'm interested, I'm probably going to pick up the Mass Effect remasters when they come out um, like, later next year, but I'm, I'm really excited about that one. I'll tell you one that, um, uh, the thing is that we don't know much about this new Mass Effect. It's just, just said, Mass Effect will return. Like it's a Marvel it- sting. I think it's probably a bit like what Zelda, what um, Nintendo did with the Breath of the Wild sequel. It's just sort of like, all right, it's in early development. We don't really have much on it yet. Just wait out for a little, for a little longer. Do we? Are we thinking 2022, 2023? When are we thinking we're going to see this new Mass Effect? I'm thinking maybe 2023. I'm thinking either early 2023 or late 2022. Yeah, I'm with you guys on that one. I think though we'll see it. At an E3, I think Microsoft are going to put that front and center at one of their E3s. If not, EA will do it during one of their EA play at one of it. Mm. Um, so uh, one that I'm really excited for, um, one I really wasn't expecting it, was um, it's not a franchise, Back for Blood. The Left, the, Gu- the Left for Dead devs doing basically a next-gen version of Left for Dead. I mean, I'm so excited to play Left yeah. for Dead. I mean, is it done by the same guys who did Left for Dead? Yeah, same yeah. guys, Turtle Rock Sister Studios. Guys. They, they, so, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in it. I think that should be really cool. It would be really cool if it did cross-play, so that way we could, like, play on different systems if, like, me and Reese don't have a PS5 by then. Yeah, no, I was, I was just saying um, in the office, because they were asking me about um, how, I, how I felt about um, the, uh, le- the um, what you, uh, how I felt about the Game Awards, and I said, oh, well, Back for Blood looks amazing. I'm, I really hope we got some cross-play, because it's going to make streaming the game really fun. Yeah. But um, you yeah, know, I think that could be a game that I'm going to put on my streaming channel at some point. That could be really awesome. Um, I, I don't think I think these guys. I'm glad they've left Valve because Valve seems like they're not interested in doing anything more with their franchises other than Half Life Alex. I mean, you know what they say about Valve? They never count up to three. They can't count to three, though. No. Yeah. Um. So we'll go for a few more. So, uh, new Smash Brothers character opened the show. Most hyped trailer. That was that was my most hyped. I was just like, right, that's it. I can go to sleep. So, um, I mean, they did. I, I, I think it was a genius move saying, oh, by the way, we're gonna have a Smash character like a few hours before the show. Because yeah, like, it yeah. it got people interested. Like, it like they got a lot of people watching the show. And again, we've learned, do not try to predict who the Smash Brothers character is, because you're yeah. never going to get it right. I'll be honest, 
I was kind of right because I was thinking that maybe we might get like a new Final Fantasy rep. At the very least, that's what I was hoping for. Fucking Sephiroth, baby! I mean, it, Holy hell! Yeah. He looks like he's going to be really good fun. I mean, how do you feel about Sephiroth coming in, Reese? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, but uh, there's already been backlash on the internet saying, oh, it's another fantasy soul character with a counter. Oh, yeah, now that really annoys me because it's, it's like... Yeah. It's, it's a funny thing. Uh, you know those are the people who keep saying, oh, we don't want another sword fight, we don't want another sword fight, yet they're the people who constantly pine for Dante. Yeah. Who is a sword fighter, and... Um, you, go, you look at Sephiroth, just from this trailer, because we haven't seen the movesets yet, Sakurai's going to present the character next Thursday. Um, because we're in... Uh, he looks like he's going to play very differently to most of the other sword fighters. I mean, um, he's got... He looks like he's going to have a longer range than most sword fighters. He looks like he's going to have some interesting magic-based moves. I like the stage looks, that's based on the final area like of Final Fantasy VII. Sorry. It seems like he's definitely going to be playing a lot different than Cloud does. But yeah, exactly. here's, the, here's the thing that I like about um, Sephiroth coming in. We're going to have more Final Fantasy music, we're going to have more Final Fantasy spirits, and we're going to have more Final Fantasy celebration, which is all stuff I really wanted to come into Smash Brothers. I, I've been so disappointed by the fact it's just been Cloud, um, Midgar, and two, and two songs. That's yeah, been it. it. It's yeah. been... It's, I honestly see it as a travesty that, that we've had so little Final Fantasy and Smash Bros. Because it's the biggest JRPG series ever. Like, it's only natural that they will be majorly celebrated in Smash Brothers. Um, so I'm looking for... I mean, even if it's just Final Fantasy VII spirits and music, like, there's a ton of good songs in Final Fantasy VII I'm alone. I'm, pre I'm predicting one of the me costumes is going to be Tifa. I'm, that's a good prediction, I'd say. I reckon one of them is going to be um, Yuffie as well. Yeah. Um, I, I, here's the thing, though. I'm just... Um, I'm hoping if they are going to branch out with uh, the Final Fantasy stuff, we're going to get all the battle themes from every single Final Fantasy. That would be <gasps> great for me. Ah, uh, that would be amazing. Like, it's just... Yeah. Uh, it does feel great that we're getting... Because I, I thought Final Fantasy Rep was not really much of a chance because Square really want to present... Uh, um, go big with Dissidia, even though that game Dissidia NT, even though that game shit, and it's surprising that they brought it in. But I'm not complaining that Sephiroth's there. I wanted it to be Crash Bandicoot, but it's not today. I think if it's not Crash yeah. at E3 next year, he's not coming in because I don't. Yeah, I, was, I don't see I any other time it's going to be announced. Yeah, I'm honestly kind of. Having difficulty deciding which I was more hyped for, Joker or Sephiroth. I mean, if you're because like, I fucking love Joker, but it's goddamn Sephiroth. Um, which one would you say you uh, of all the Smash characters that have come so far? Which one got you the most hype, Reese, for them coming into the game? I'd probably say uh, Sephiroth right now. No, no really. I was gonna say the one that I was nuts for when I saw they were coming in after Joker was Banjo. Yeah, yeah I was thinking you go with Banjo recently, honestly. Well, no, because uh, I, I got played Final Fantasy VII on the PS1. That's very fair. Yeah, no, it's, um, do you think that this edition, because I don't want to spend too long on this trailer, but do you think this edition means we might see down the line Final Fantasy VII Remake Cloud version on the Switch? Ah, oh, that would be so cool. That would be so cool. Well, it, it's a lot more possible to try to fit that on the tiny cartridge. But yeah, because Final Fantasy VII, <laughs> Final Fantasy VII Remake, they're never going to be able to natively put that on the Switch. Yeah, they get, they're going to have to do what they did with the PS1, put it on three separate cartridges. Yeah. Uh, do you... F but um, I feel like... Uh, I'm just calling it cloud version is just going to be a great pun. <laughs> yeah. But um, I, I could so see them doing that, because it's like... There is an inbuilt audience for Cloud for for the Final Fantasy fans on the Switch. Final Fantasy Square really seem to be supporting the Switch in a big way. I could so see it happening. I could see us having Final Fantasy VII Remake yeah. Cloud Edition. I I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't get it if it did because I don't like the idea of having to have an internet connection to play that game. And I do not. At all times. Yeah, and I do not trust my phone to be a good Wi-Fi hotspot <laughs> for doing that. Um, it would, um, yeah, it would, be, it would be cool though if they did add it in. Um, no, so we had Perfect Dark. Oh, oh yeah, just to circle back to that. 
people are saying that they think Sora could be in it now because both Sephiroth and Cloud were from Kingdom Hearts. I don't think that will be the case. You you, you don't just have to talk to uh, Square. You just have to talk to Disney about that. Yeah, yeah. That's not just that fact. It's also. Do you think Square Square's now put three characters in? I don't see. And, and keep in mind, only one of them really has a big Nintendo Switch con- Nintendo connection. Let's face it. When Cloud came in, he hadn't really been on Nintendo all that much. He'd been only a side character in those games, and Sephiroth. Again, until Final Fantasy VII did not come onto a Nintendo oh. system until the Switch last year. Yeah. So, so, how do we feel then? Uh, uh, so, um, I don't see Sora being a thing. I'd like Sora to come in because I'm a big Kingdom Hearts fan, but uh, that's I don't think that's happening. Um, so, then there was Scavengers. I mean, we all forgot that game existed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it looks boring. It looks I'll boring. Um, the Callisto Protocol, I don't really know what to make of the Callisto Protocol. That looks a weird game. And I completely, I honestly, I was going through my list and I was like, wait, what was the Callisto Protocol? I completely forgot about it. That was that was a Dead Space clone, right? That was a Dead Space clone, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I'm interested in that. I, I kind of like the, the first Dead Space. And I'm it, pretty interested in that. And it's made by the Dead Space. It's made by the same people. Yeah, yeah it's kind of interesting that they don't want to make any more Dead Space. They're done with Dead Space. So now we're going to do I this mean, thing. I mean, EA did shut down Visceral Games. Hashtag fuck EA. Yeah, that's definitely... Um, yeah, it's all kicking the teeth because the last game had all the massive cliffhanger. I know. That never got resolved. It's. I, I don't see EA actually ever going to resolve that. So uh, this is the next best thing, I think. Yeah. Um, open Roads. We didn't know much... I don't know much about that game, but it looks, in, looks like it's going to be a very interesting narrative game. It seems like a very choice-based game. Like, it feels like one of those games where the cho- your choices really affect the narrative. Yeah it, yeah, it had that line of, we don't know what we're going to find, but we know we're going to do it together. Uh, it's, yeah. It's interesting because it's not... Nar- it looks interesting, but a narrative game I'm really looking forward to next year, I'm assuming it's coming next year, it's not been confirmed, but is um, that one that was shown off at the PS5 showcase, uh, Goodbye Volcano High. Uh, that look, that one has me way more intrigued. Does, does anyone remember that one, or is it just me? No, I don't remember that one. I don't remember that one, honestly. Honestly, but, yeah, look, see, yeah, it does seem interesting. Honestly, look at the trailer for that one when you when we're done with this, because it's honestly, it's a pre. It, it looks really interesting. It looks very Life is Strange like. Um, well, it, it, it does have the title of an anime. <laughs> oh yeah, true. Uh, then there was. Um, uh, Disco Elysium, the final cut. I mean, I'm look, I've been looking for an excuse to play Disco Elysium. I'm going to use that to all its worth. Yeah, I, I mean, I, Disco Elysium has been on my list since it won so many awards last year. So, uh, Dragon Age that got announced. Uh, how do you guys feel about Dragon Age coming back? Uh, the, the last few games haven't been that stellar, in my opinion. Uh, I've. I haven't, I've heard all I think about Inquisition, so I'm kind of interested. Plus, as I said, is is he basically EA's last good fr- last franchise that they haven't fucked up? I'm saying give them time; they'll do it. And I, I, I think they were a bit. I think they made a mistake by not showing much. To me, that says this game is in very, very, very early development. We're not seeing this one for quite some time. And I don't like the fact well, that either that or they don't have any confidence in it. Yeah, that uh, if it's coming next year, all I can say is. You better show off more soon, EA, because yeah. you. Uh, I'm, I'm glad Bioware's still handling it. But, um, yeah. um, I, I would say with EA, it just doesn't seem like they're starting to book, move a bit more into single player games, mostly after the success of a uh, of Star Wars Fallen Order. Or yeah, Jedi Fallen Order. Jedi Fallen Order is really, really good. Good, actually. I'll give you got to give them that credits on that one. I it? mean. It's a souls like in Star Wars. What's not to love? I think um, it's officially canon. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, films. yeah no, that's that's. Um, I mean, I I think they've done a pretty good job now working the Star Wars canon around this stuff. Um, yeah. War. Uh, then there was um, that one, Endless the Dungeon, Warhammer. the Warframe yeah. game, which looked weird. We had Crimson Crimson Desert, that MMO from um, the South Korean studio, where. Korea. They, yeah. uh, how do we? I'm not really into MMOs, but it looked all right. Yeah, it had a nice anime art style. I mean, 
I don't know. From what I saw it, uh, it I honestly, it looked like the frame rate was kind of was wasn't that good. Like I noticed it was lagging quite a bit, even in the trailer. Well, this is apparently an early build of the game that they use for the trailer. But that being said, I don't imagine they're gonna. F- this is a massive MMO. I mean, if it's having that much trouble when they are complete control of it, what's it gonna be like when they got to compensate for fa- hundreds and thousands of players at one time? Yeah, I mean, surface. yeah, I mean, look at um, Final Fantasy XIV. That thing lags quite a bit at the best of times, and that's been and they've had loads of time to refine that um, engine. Uh, yeah. Then uh, there was um, uh, Endless Dungeons. I completely forgot about that game until again until I saw it. I don't really know what that's going to play like. Um, there was then we got into the. Big PS, the first PS5 exclusive season. Do you reckon that's coming out next year? Um, I think that'll be the year after. Yeah, it, it does seem like Sony's really bloated for their big exclusives in 2021. Because, yeah. um, I mean, look at all the games you've got. You've got Ratchet and Clank, you've got um, Oddworld, you have. Uh, yeah, we've got um, another one that we're going to talk. Uh, another one we're going to talk about later because it got a release date, uh, Returnal. Um, it's kind of, I kind of find that really, that I, I don't, it looked really interesting though. I wouldn't mind if that's waiting until 2022. Um, did that, did that one look like it was going to appeal to you guys or is it going to be, I'm waiting for a review before I pick that one up? I think I'm going to wait to see more gameplay because from what I saw, it's just a walking simulator. Yeah, I, I might wait to see more. I mean, uh, you guys are not big walking sim fans, are you? No. I mean, if it's itself an exploration game, like it kind of is in Breath of the Wild, I wouldn't mind as much. Yeah, it, 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 this, um, it do, doesn't look like it's going to be as good at um, loving the mundane like um, Spiritfarer is. Like, And seriously, Spiritfarer is an amazing game, honestly. I've been, if it wasn't for Hades, I'd say it was the best indie game this year. Yeah, I'm honestly surprised that it wasn't. It didn't win the uh, the thing that it was nominated for. Oh, well, it was nominated for best indie game. And it was nominated for Games for Impact. Which can I say? Tell me why. Games for Impact. Yeah. Yeah, Games for Impact. Which tell me why won. And I did not review that game. To I reviewed that game all right, but I said I preferred Life is Strange one and two to it because um, it's it bug. It doesn't really nail the ending. And honestly, it, it doesn't have it. And it really has no replay value. You can't affect the plot all that much. It's very much you're on one path and it just keeps going. Um, so uh, then we got Vin Diesel showing up because he's in Arc Two. <laughs> yep. As, as, as you messaged uh, in the night, it was like a Vin quick Diesel question. Two's in a row. As I asked on the night, did anyone? Does anyone even like Arc? They do have a big fan base. Yeah, that's. that's I I don't know anyone who li- who likes it. Yeah, because it was in early access for like five years, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was so long in early access, and um, it was. And it's been modded like crazy. Like I've seen a Pokemon and it's, one for crying and it's, out loud. And it's getting an animated. It's getting an animated series as well. I don't think anyone was expecting that. No, I. To be honest, if we're talking about animated series, and this is another thing, Sega barely showed up at this thing, and I thought they were going to show up with Sonic. But there was that announcement on Netflix about the three D animated series, and I assumed. Oh, they took it down because this was a Game Awards, going to be at the Game Awards tonight, and it wasn't there. And I was like, well, what are you waiting for? Just announce it. If you've got it done, um, just say, yeah, we're going to have a Sonic, we're celebrating Sonic's 30th anniversary, we're going to have um, a 3D animated series on Netflix. It seems weird they saved it, but um, I mean, Arc 2 looks like it's going to be a bit more refined than Arc 1. Yeah, I have, I have to say it was also like an MMO again. Yeah, that would be very interesting. And it, will it be terrible on the Switch again? Like, seriously, has, have you actually seen what the Switch port looks like? Uh, and, um, atrocious. Yeah, and honestly, when watching the trailer, I don't know why, but the first thing that came to my mind is God of War. Uh, you know Just because it's a guy, it's, covered, it's a muscly bald guy covered in tattoos with a little girl. I was expecting to hear him at some point go, just go, go. Do you know what's interesting, though? I actually thought it was a spin-off to um, Horizon at one point. I thought it might have been that. Yeah, I, I was thinking. Yeah, I was thinking that kind of, yeah. 
Because I thought, oh, is this going to be something like Horizon, but it's actual dinosaurs? Or something like that, rather than the machine dinosaurs that we have? Or you know, uh, I wasn't quite so sure what was happening with it. Or is that... Oh, as, I, oh, as I would call it, Horizon Zero Yawn. Yeah. You, um, in, in, then there was uh, the Fall Guys Winter Wonderland upgrade. I mean, I'm the only big Fall Guys player out of the three of us, I think. But yeah. I I haven't played it. I'm not really interested. Seems good, but not my main thing. You'd be really surprised. It's genuinely quite fun. I've actually um, lost a lot more time on it than I thought I was going to. It's not been my, oh, this is what I'm getting up to play multiplayer online every day. It's more, I fancy a bit of a go of that. And it's quite good fun. I mean, you've seen me play it on stream. I was all right at it. But um, I still haven't won an episode yet. Um, uh, Elite Dangerous Odyssey. I have no idea what that game's about. And that trailer did not do anything to help me with that one. It's that... Yeah, it's it's a spaceship. I remember. Yeah, I remember um, the original... Elite Dangerous is actually a very complicated ship ship MMO. Like even just yeah. getting like making your ship fly is uh, is an ordeal. Reese kind of yeah, had to school us on that one. Basically, you create your own game in it. Like, yeah, it's a uh, yeah. So it's it's very uh, as far as I know, it's very realistic. It's kind of realistic as to how space ship might actually work, though. Yeah, it is. I mean, um, I don't think any of us are going to take it on that one. I think that one's pretty much out of our wheelhouse. Yeah, because uh, you'll need to have a PC to play it. I'm, I'm telling you right now, though, um, the next one was great for me. Evil Dead the game, that looks fun as hell. It, um, yeah, although, did they all get, like, Alone in the Dark vibes? You know, like those multiplayer Alone in the Dark games? Kind of, but it looks like it's going to be better than those. Yeah, I mean, I mean, come on, it's Evil Dead. It's gonna be great. Who doesn't love Evil Dead? I just I played just to play just to play as Bruce Campbell. Yeah, because uh, I thought it was Dead by Daylight like DRC at first. So did I. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is there a big one that so, which we kind of knew was going to come at the Game Awards, but because of the Capcom leak, um, Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection. I mean, yeah, we yeah. knew there was a Ghosts and Goblins remake coming to the Switch in February because it said in that leak, and I think that announcement pretty much confirms. That leak is definitely real now. Yeah. Um, so when I saw it, I was uh, kind of half expecting, like, um, oh, maybe they make it like a sort of gritty third person game. But no, they would just talk about like the uh, original 2D game, which I actually, which I'm more happy about, really. You got- yeah, because it was always meant to be a bit of a spoof, like a parody game. It was not meant to be serious. Yeah, and I like the fact they are doing it like that. I mean, are you guys going to pick that one up for your Switches, or are you going to say, I might wait yeah, for a sale for I, that I, one? I may do, because I did play the original a lot. Um, I might pick it up, but I don't think we're going to be playing much of it, because I can guarantee, if I, if I struggle at Castlevania, I'm really going to struggle at like Ghosts of Goblins. I'm hope, yeah, I'm hoping they turn down the difficulty a little bit, because I've been playing a bit of it on um, the... Oh, I have a feeling they won't. I got um, I love trying it out the original versions on the NES and SNES collections. Um, so I mean, it's going to be. It's great that it's there. I'm glad to see Capcom is supporting the Switch quite a bit because that leads me into my other big thing we got from the Switch: Monster Hunter Rise demo coming in January. Which we're going to take Reese's advice and pick it up so we get our hang of that game before we have to do multiplayer yeah. with him. Because yeah. Because um, no doubt when you do your review of it, you're going to be playing with all of us, right? Yes, definitely. I'm going to want to test it out as much as possible. Oh, um, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, you can hunt with up to three friends at the same time. Excellent. I mean, that, it's, it's going to be... I think it's going to be genuinely great. I hope it's one of those demos where um, you can... where you, everything you do gets saved over to a proper game like Pyro Warriors and Pikmin. They've not done that in the past with the demos. The Monster Hunter. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, maybe this will be the difference, but I'm not yeah. counting on it. Um, that was pretty much it. If you so, uh, but also, we've got to mention about Capcom. They're doing the arcade collection for Switch. Oh, yeah, yeah the arcade for, collection. For free as well. Yeah. Which I'm so surprised about. Like, seriously. Um, and it's funny as well, because seeing all the arcade cabinets, it's all the ones that show up in high school, girl. Oh, yes, definitely, because we've been watching that. Oh, one. right, no way. Yeah, so it's like, oh, I, I know all these again now. I'm, I'm, I mean, it's free. I'm definitely going to put that on my Switch. I love um, all these old Capcom arcade games. I'm looking forward to tr- trying them out again. 
Oh, yeah, um, I'm, re- I'm really looking forward to, like, trying out these uh, arcade Capcom games for the first time. It should be really fun. Um, so that was kind of the s- Nintendo's presence there. It was more, again, it was kind of them doing third-party games. They had a better presence this year than last year, where they only really brought Raven Default. Yeah. Um, yeah, I will admit, I was kind of hoping for a bit more information on the Breath of the Wild sequel. Uh, we'll get to that at the end, but yeah, no. Um, uh, um, oh, also, what, what do you guys think about no word about the Switch Pro? That's surprising not, to me. I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that upset, really. I'm not really expecting much on the. Uh, on the I wasn't really expecting anything on the Switch Pro. I feel like if uh, Nintendo were to do that, they'll probably wait till e, E3 next year or something. Uh, no, I think, I think if it's coming like first quarter, I think it'll be out before E3. I'm going to say like yeah, April it, or May. It will be. April or May, I reckon, it'll come out. Uh, but if that's the case, I reckon they're going to talk about it in January or February. Probably January. Or maybe they might even wait till March, because they're not going to do anything in February. We're not going to have a Nintendo Direct in February, because look at all what's coming to the Switch in February. You're going to have the Capcom Arcade Collection. You've got Ghosts and Goblins now, Persona 5 Strikers, Bravely Default 2. Monster Hunter? Mon- no, that's March. Oh, I'm uh, saying that's March. Oh, March, my bad. Um... Uh, Super Mario uh, 3D World plus Bowser's Fury you've got all that and then you want to have a Nintendo Direct on top of all that uh, they're not doing it so there's no Direct happening in February I guarantee that um, fingers crossed then we at least get one in January I would say uh, I'm expecting one in January but I wouldn't be surprised if we go until March or even April without a Direct mm, yeah um, uh, that being said uh, next one a lot but I feel like Nintendo had a good presence here, and uh, it's. I mean, we'll talk about what they could have done at the end of this thing. But um, moving on, we have uh, flight simulators coming to the Xbox. That's uh, what, hooray! I I must be honest. Flight simulator has been one of the most biggest nightmares of an install I've ever had in my life. No joke. I tried. I didn't want to install it on a certain drive, and I wanted to take it off. I couldn't uninstall the game. I could not. Phys- I physically could not find the file and delete it off my computer, even though I bought it off on Steam. It's weird to fight. It's weird to fight simulate with like those simulated games because it's those games that you either you cannot. It's those games that you either cannot stand or you put hundreds of hours into. It's an amazing achievement, but I do not know who's doing that for like who's like spending six hours doing a flight from like London to Tokyo. On the thing, I like, well, I well, I know because I know a, a few pilots, and they all play it. Do, 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 uh, oh, hi. Um, I mean, because really they can fly for all the cities without yeah, breaking loads of laws. How funny was how funny is that though? Just right now, I've now I've landed the plane, my actual plane. Now it's time to play on my computer plane. What I did was what That's I found what interesting. What I found interesting was though with flight simulators, I watched a bunch of footage of. Um, uh, of gameplay in Athens, Greece, and it's a it's a city I'm very familiar with. I've seen it from above quite a lot because I like to go to the high places in that city. It's very accurate. Like it's amazing the effort they put in. It's an amazing technical achievement that um, Flight Simulator is. But at the end of the day, I don't have the time or the patience to get into it. And it's the controls are really hard. I just it. It's a game that I think is an amazing achievement, but it infuriates me to no end. Yeah, I can yeah, imagine. You, you need a specialist uh, flight control stick. I controls that, to yeah, get the most out of the game. Yeah, keyboard and mouse does not help it. And it's like, what, what do you mean? No. I can't. Uh, what do you mean it's not level? How do I level? I'm doing it. Now I'm suddenly not level. What do I have to do? What? What? Oh god! It's, oh god! If using keyboard and mouse is difficult. Imagine trying to use a controller. Oh god! God, I'm, I'm not looking forward to people playing control. Double controller. Um, Returnal <laughs> got a release date uh, for March, that one. I mean, I think that's a good PS5 exclusive to get people really into the PlayStation 5. It looks like it's going to be very similar to, like, Hades in the sense of you're going to keep going and doing the same thing over and over again. You have to find the same bosses again and again yeah. and again. And yeah, it's, it's kind of weird that so I don't think Sony really showed off anything major for the PS5. No, that was it, it was kind of this... No, and, nothing major, at least... Oh, it was Oddworld they showed off as well, but that's coming to PlayStation 4 as well, which yeah. I think kind of dampens the experience of that one. Like, I'm going to get the PS5 edition, and yet I know this is going to work on the PlayStation 4 as well. And it's, it's not. I'm not annoyed that these games are coming to PlayStation 4. I'm yeah. more. It's more that. Sony- I mean, 
I mean, in all fairness, I think it was originally coming to the PS4. They just started put on PS5 as well. Yeah, but uh, Sony kind of lied in their marketing because they did say we're not gonna, we're really not gonna support the PlayStation 4 much after Ghost of Tsushima, and they've just completely gone back on that after pre orders yeah. came well, in. That, that's probably because not many people can actually get a PS5. Yeah, that's probably why, really. Yeah, no, no, I think it's a good idea in that sense, but I wish um, they hadn't dr- used that to drive up hype for the PlayStation 5. Uh, it takes two. That looks a You're weird game. game. Yeah, Yarn Ren's uh, oh. Love Fantasy. We in, oh, can't what? wait for that live stream. We are never, ever, oh, ever. Maybe, maybe, maybe in it we'll finally see them kiss. I am, I am definitely killing you both next chance I see you. Um. Ah, uh, you won't. You won't. You love us too much. Well, Plus, we were... you need two extra people for Anime Amigos. True. Oddworld, Oddworld. I mean, it's it's kind. Of, it looks all right. I mean, I love the look of it. It looks like it's going to be a really good game. I'm glad the franchise is coming back. Did, I mean, I, I mean, any excuse for more Oddworld, I am more than happy for. I think they showed off a bit more gameplay this time, which is always good to see. I mean, it looks like it's going to be real oh, yeah. fun. But I don't. Definitely, think- looks like it definitely looks like a game that's really utilizing the uh, PS4 and PS5. Yeah, the trailer did not look amazing, though, I'm going to be honest. It, 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 it didn't really excite me the way the other two trailers did. At the same time, I feel like it's kind of to the point where, you know what, we've shown quite a bit of this game already. We don't really have much more to show without giving too much away. So they're kind of like, it's more just something to just like say, oh, this is when it's coming out, by the way. Um, Evil West. I don't remember it. that game. I don't no idea how that game's going to play. Looks like it might be a first-person yeah. shooter. It, 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 it didn't show any gameplay, did it? it no, just a CG trailer. Just a CG trailer, and I, I I'm not a big fan of that one. I, it, it, unless you're going to really give me an idea of what the game's going to be like, I'd prefer you just show me s- some gameplay footage. Um, yeah. I mean, like you can get away with that and say, like, when they revealed the Demon Souls remake, like you can get away with that because we all know what Demon Souls is like. So we got a yeah. good idea of what it's going to be, whereas. I have no idea what this game is. What is this game? Is it third person? Is it first person? Um, yeah, I'll keep an eye on it, but I'm not that excited about it. Then there was that anime-ish game, Scarlet Nexus. Uh, yeah, I saw the trailer for that, I think, uh, around February this year, actually, like the first trailer. I'm really excited for it. It feels like a... It, it reminds me a bit of Astral Chain, honestly. Yeah. Mm, Which yeah. I... I really love, so I'm really excited for that game. Um, then we had the um, Among Us uh, getting a new map based on a game that only Reese has played out of the three of us. Well, it's not a game, it's a whole collection. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Henry Stickman. Yeah, no, me and El- yeah have not played, a, played Henry Stickman. So. Oh, I, I had never, I've never even heard of it. Is it on Steam? Uh, uh, yeah, it, also, it started off as uh, on Newgrounds like years and years ago. Ah. I mean, it looks. I mean, it looks cool. I, I, I mean, I'll probably end up playing it a bit more because I, I do. I am an Among Us group, who are um, unbelievable it asses to me. When they, when I see someone commit murder and then jump into a vent and I call the meeting and then they all say, "No, you're definitely being suspicious. We're going to throw you out," and then and then they lose to the imposter. I'll be honest. If I were to play, if I were to play. I will probably be a troll and try everything I can to make myself look like the suspect. Um, Even if I wasn't. Master Chief's coming to Fortnite. No one cares. I, d- I just well, lost... Although uh, Master Chief and uh, Kratos will not be in the same game. That is weird, yeah. yeah. And The Walking Dead are now in there as well. And Marvel. Yeah. That is a weird collection. Yeah. That's a- uh, Ruin King Lo- League of Legends story. Now, none of us are big League of Legends players, but we kind of like the look at this one. It looks interesting. I wouldn't say that much. Like, I'm not into League of Legends, but I do you have a bit of an interest in the lore of it? Kind of? Yeah, no, I'm the same as you. I, I kind of like the lore yeah. of League of Legends, but I'm not a big mm, yeah. LOL player. It's a, it's, a, it's a bit like Warhammer for me. I like the story. I'm not interested in the game. Yeah, yeah, but we were all kind of saying we thought this one looked all right. Yeah, it looks oh, like that. Oh, speaking of which, yeah, there's a uh, Warhammer game coming out. Yeah, new Warhammer game coming out. That looks all right. 
Um, where yeah, it, looks is my, be, it looks like it looks like Final Fantasy would be multiplayer. I hope it is. Where is my Amumu platformer though? I want a platformer where I play as Amumu from League of Legends. <laughs> I need my my boy needs some respect. Um, oh. Then I I I I totally know what that is. Yeah, Amumu. Yeah, those are the weird things from Final, those are the little weird things to go Koopa for Final Fantasy, right? No, that's the Moogles. It was a joke, you pleb. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm brain, brain not working properly, clearly. I, there's not enough sleep. Uh, only trait we haven't talked about, then, is um, Medal of Honor VR. Yeah, I did not expect that franchise to get resurrected. No, I mean, neither. That was weird. And I do not care. Neither. It's essentially EA's answer to Call of Duty, which is essentially Call of Duty. Also, yeah. Just, Based well, in well, Medal of Honor. Yes, well, I think that was before Call of Duty came out. Yeah, the no, Medal of Honor yeah, does precede Call of Duty. Yeah, and then after Call of Duty got again popular, they just tried to copy it. Yeah. Also, I'm not going to see a bunch of people saying, oh, I'm going to get an Oculus Rift to play that. I mean, a bunch of people say, I'm going to get an Oculus Rift to play Half Life Alex. But they're not going to get one to play Medal of Honor VR. I don't see that happening. I, it's a, it was a good trailer, but they did not sell me on the game. Yeah, or, or like Ellie brought up, the character modules just look like they're out dishonored. Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah, they look like they. Yeah, they look just like they feel very uncanny valley almost. Yeah. So, um, before we wrap this all up, uh, is there any um, games that you were hoping were going to show up but didn't? Well, that's Elden Ring for Ellie. Elden Ring, yeah, Elden Ring. I'm so upset we didn't. We don't. When are we going to finally get information about this? Good, good, actually, in all fairness, it is written by George R. Martin. He takes ages to do books. God knows how many the game. writes about a book every decade. Seriously, where is book six? So, um, do you, what about uh, uh, Breath of the Wild 2? I was a bit disappointed that didn't show up. I mean, we haven't seen anything about that since June 2019. Yeah. Yeah. What, what was, is happening with that? I, I did have a slight hope. I did think we were going to get it, but I was having a slight hope for maybe a little bit more on God of War Ragnarok. Yeah, I was kind of hoping for that one. Well, I'm not, well, not too disappointed we didn't get any of it. We already did learn about it like, a couple I'm of I'm hoping ago. we get... Um, I was hoping for Metal Gear Solid Remake. Like, I know Blue... I really hope that game is real. I'm now starting to doubt. I know it's a very credible source to this leaker because he did get God of War correct. So, uh, yeah. do you guys think that game's real or do you think it's... Um, might, you might have got his information wrong. Um... I think it mostly depends on uh, if Konami have patched things up for Kojima or not. Well, that, but, but they don't really need to. It's more so if Sony done this deal to have Blue Point Games With, do it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. If we have, I don't think we're going to get anything for a while because they did just finish the, the Demon Souls. Right? Now, apparently they've been working yeah, on... I, I, I think it's still too early. Apparently they've been working on this at the same time as Demon Souls, and apparently it's, it's going to be ready to go uh, around the same time as God of War. They're planning to sort of like blanket the market so that Halo Infinite doesn't get too much advertising, so they can say we've got God of War and Metal Gear Solid, and Halo then doesn't look that good in comparison. Halo already doesn't look good in comparison. It doesn't. Oh, it doesn't look good in comparison to Bug Stacks. <laughs> It's not, yeah, no, Halo Infinite did not look great. I'm hoping we get to see some improved gameplay and the ray tracing and all that business um, sometime well, in the future. Uh, what I find hilarious is that on the back of the series uh, uh, Xbox, it still has the, uh, the uh, advertisement for it. Yeah, it's like we didn't have time to remove that from it. Um, yeah. So, yeah. You know, want something even funnier. Um, up until recently, with the FIFA 21 trailers, EA still had the, the date of release on the, in the trailers, rather than just available now. That's how lazy they are. But uh, here's the thing that I'm wondering. Like, um, the, the company that I'm... Because I'm looking at all the companies. Microsoft have been pretty open about what we can expect in 2021. Sony has said they're gonna have a, we're going to have a really good 2021 with them. Nintendo's not really communicated much past March... At all, like the only game yeah. I think we know is coming out after March, but we don't know when is Pokemon Snap. So my wondering is, I, well, 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 just gonna say, when does the Lord End Review get released? 
Oh, um, because that's going to be the sequel, isn't it? It's summer. The Neo: The World Ends review is coming out in the summer. Yeah. So yeah, we know that's coming. Um, I think Nintendo are probably trying to get have people focus more on what's coming out in the near future rather than what's coming out in the far future. Uh, yeah. But here's here's well, the thing. Because we like at, at this point we already know like we're still waiting for Metroid Prime, Bayonetta three, Breath of the Wild two. I think we just kept Nintendo just kind of like uh yeah we'll wait a little bit before we announce anything else. So uh, here's my question then on that one, which is um, do we fit uh, and and forgive me if I'm wrong. Uh, uh, do we think we're going to get to March and we're going to be in the same situation we were for most 2020 where we don't know what's coming, we're going to get past a big game and Nintendo's still not going to talk to us and we're just waiting on a Twitter drop for what um, their plans are? Or do you think I think you're waiting to do a direct. Do you yeah, think- I, don't, I don't think we'll, it'll be quite as bad as it was this year because of course the 2021 that, uh, coronavirus will hopefully be mostly gone by like... But be, Mostly be gone soon. In I'd say. So I'd say. I mean, this time maybe it won't be nearly as bad. Yeah, I think the other difference is we're going to have way better treatments for coronavirus in 2021. We're going to have way better. We've learned how to work in the environment of um, a COVID world, but we're going to. And as we're slowly, slowly getting out of it, we're going to. Um, Nintendo is going to be way more concrete on their release dates. They can be very more, way more less worried about announcing a game and having it delayed. So I feel like we will get Nintendo Directs again in 2021. When would you guys bet we're going to get the next Nintendo Direct if that is the case? I think it'll be after Monster Hunter Rise. I'm going to say probably either February or March. I'm going to say if it's not if it's not mid to late January, it's not until after Monster Hunter Rise. Yeah. I think yeah. I think they're going to want to have those games not be overshadowed. I think they're going to want Brave Default Two and Persona Five Strikers and Mario and uh, Brave Default, all those games and Monster Hunter as well and Ghosts and Goblins. They're going to want those games to have their big moment. They not be overshadowed by a bunch of announcements. Like imagine in the next one we get a release date for Breath of the Wild Two and a full title. We're not going to be talking about all those games coming out in February. We're going to be talking about Breath of the Wild Two. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it's. Um, I mean, we'll be doing this again when we get a Nintendo Direct. So I'm. Um, so we'll obviously discuss Nintendo's plans further down the line. But uh, uh, with Breath of the, well, the Wild Two, I feel like that's something they're definitely saving until E3. I don't think we're going to be getting that uh, in like in a Nintendo Direct. Do you guys think it's an end of 2021 game, or do you go, are you going for? Because uh, I think I'm the only one of the three of us that thinks it is 20, end of 2021. You guys seem to think it's March 2022. Uh, yeah, I guess I more lean towards like mid to late 2022 at this point. Yeah. If it, if it's not after Christmas 2021, it will definitely be further in the year 2022. Uh, yeah. I, I would have to agree. I don't, I don't think it's coming... Uh, I definitely don't think it's coming in the summer of 2021 because I think they want at least a year's gap between Age of Calamity... And Breath of the Wild too, because um, yeah, uh, without going to spoilers, we have no idea how Age of Calamity is going to affect the plot of Breath of the Wild too. It could go in any direction following the yeah. way that game worked out. I don't know if you guys have um, got to the end of the story yet or not. Uh, dude, I sent you my review for it yesterday. Of course, I made it to the end. Yeah, yeah, uh, recently. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got spoiled on it, so I, I, so I know what happens. Uh, so, how, uh, without giving away to everyone else, do you guys think that's going to really affect the um, events of Breath of the Wild 2, or is this going to be, or is it not going to have too much of an effect? And I think it won't have that much of an effect. I don't think it'll have too much. I'd definitely say it's more for, uh, to see, this is gonna, definitely going to be focusing more on Breath of the Wild than it will have on Age of Calamity. Okay. Yeah. Is that, even though Edge of is now technically is uh, canon now. Yeah, but again, it's because of the timelines. Yeah, it's kind. It's kind of weird. Um, I mean, we'll. I mean, we could probably, uh, but uh, I kind of feel it could affect it, but I don't want to jump ahead of the gun. So, um, 
out of all of this, now the game awards are done, and we got a bit more of an idea. Which company of the free of uh, the big game developers? So we've got um, Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo. Which one do you think's got the best 2021 lineup coming? Well, for me, Nintendo because I'm Monster Hunter. I probably say for me, probably Sony. See, I'm going to go for um, Nintendo at this point just because not only have we got all those really great games coming up early on in the year, um, if the room, we've got Pokemon Snap, we're probably going to get Metroid Prime Trilogy for the um, anniversary or the new 2D Metroid that's been very r- rumoured. Um, we've got Zelda's... Oh, oh, of course, we could get something for Zelda's 35th anniversary. We've got Zelda's 35th anniversary, anniversary, which probably is going to be Skyward Sword and a few other games. Um... We'll have Pokemon's 25th anniversary. They're bound to do something for that. I, I could see Nintendo having a really, really strong year, and we're going to have the Switch Pro coming, which could be Hopefully. could be good. I, I don't see that being wrong. I think uh, there's so it feels like Mario 3D All Stars. In this is the worst kept secret in gaming right now. Yeah. Um, uh, the uh, so I. I'd say those so Microsoft is in a bit of a jam right now, and I don't know are they going to sell that much next year if they don't get people excited for the if the Series X is not going to be exciting until twenty twenty two. Are you going to sell a lot of people on Game Pass on that basis? I I, uh, I think Microsoft's going to have to cut the price. Yeah, the I'm store. I'm a bit worried that this might be another Xbox One situation for Microsoft. They really aren't doing well at this. Point. I would say though, um, place we said this about Sony with the PlayStation Three, and when we gave them a bit longer, they really bounced back in a big way. And the latter half of the PlayStation 3's life was really good. So yeah, but at the same time, at the same time, I don't really know know if Microsoft will, and I don't think Microsoft really ever has had the same impact with with their consoles as Sony has. I think it's because they don't. They don't like the idea of exclusives, and they don't like the idea of big, of big franchises that they own. They, they, if you really think about it, Microsoft's only really known for Halo, Forza, and Gears. They're not really known for anything else, even though they do have a whole bunch of IPs and all these big studios. I mean, they're adding um, Bethesda to their to their list. They're going to be. Um, they're going to have uh, the Elder Scrolls as a first-party title, and that's going to be a big deal for them. So I wouldn't count Microsoft out yet, but they are on thin ice at this point. Yeah. Um, Especially since they have that most of their games are coming to PC anyway. Yeah, no, it's in a kind of a case of if all these things are going to be on Xbox Game Pass for PC, why should I bought and I've got if I've invested a lot in a really good PC, why should I get an Xbox? What is going to be the big deal with the Series X? Or I mean the Series S, I mean, is really cheap at the minute. Like it, it relatively compared to the other consoles. So I could see people buying that to save up room on their PCs, but that's the only scenario I can think of where that's happening. Yeah. Yeah. So um well, that's it for this time. We'll probably, we don't know when we're going to do another one of these ones, but Anime Amigos will be on next week, so you're going to get more of us then. We shall yep, see you. Yeah, un- unlucky you. We'll see you all next time. Thank you very much. <laughs>